Yo, Nick Peterson giving you some brain food. Today we're talking about the actual concept and practice of learning how to learn because people are not inherently bad learners. They're just untrained and if they think they're trained in learning, they're probably trained in a way that is less than efficient, right? That's our school system. They've done what they can. Uh, but there's some missing components for people that have wanted to learn how to learn and have not been able to master that process and accelerate the learning. So I'm going to give you some hacks, right? We'll call them hacks because you can implement them right now, and I think you should. I think you should implement them. You can pause this video, implement, come back, or watch this video, take notes, or attach images like we've taught you how to do in, in previous episodes, create a mind palace of some sort, and then implement. Because the first hack I'm going to give you is active. You're going to hear me say active a lot because learning is not passive. When you take in information, you're not learning anything. And when you take notes verbatim and you're not creating something, you're not learning. You need to re recontextualize and create. So one of my favorite learning methods is read rapidly and voraciously and then recontextualize. So, okay, I read about the spiritual practice and I'm not a spiritual guy, but I read about the spiritual practice. What does that mean for me? What does that mean for my clients? What does that mean for my employees? Okay, so this is always going on so right now you can say okay learning is active what does that mean for me what does that mean for my wife maybe she's been googling how to pinterest but hasn't actually created a board or a pin or whatever they're called so you should encourage her to be active maybe you're sitting around reading how to understand music theory so i could play piano but you haven't touched a piano the learning doesn't happen until it becomes active so immediately right now identify the things you're trying to learn that you could be more active and create more and recontextualize better cool two prioritize information be crystal clear on what you want to take in because there is so much information out there and it's coming quickly and it comes so quickly in sound bites and long form and I, you know, uh, podcasts and ebooks and books, uh, documentaries, YouTube videos like this. And what I like to do is I like to watch them at higher speed, faster than I can take notes verbatim because it forces my brain to prioritize what is signal, what is noise. Because I'm, you know, not always keeping up. And I can say that's not important. That's not important. That's not, oh, that's important. And that's a signal for the brain to remember that and attach imagery, which we've talked about and I'll talk about in a minute. So prioritize what you want to learn. Sometimes I know people that do really, really well by having some white noise or, or listening to stuff very quietly. So they have to tune in. Right. They have to have they really, really have to be listening and picking the information that's important. Uh, so prioritize what you want to learn and make sure you are constantly aware of what you are taking in. OK, and a good way to do that again, listen to a speaker and take notes by hand. If you take notes by hand, you're not going to be able to keep up and that will force you to prioritize, which is a very, very good thing. Wrote. Uh, verbatim notes, useless. You don't learn a single thing. You will walk away, come back, and have no idea what's been written down. Three, emotions and imagery. And if you watch our last video on how to remember quicker, I walk you through how I remember things forwards and backwards. Long list of things. And it's by attaching imagery to it. Now, the other thing you want to do when you want to learn, you really want to learn to play piano. You really want to learn to play guitar. You really want to learn how to write copy. You have to attach a strong emotion to it. 
if I don't learn how to write copy, I lose my business and all of my employees lose their jobs and I just can't, I can't have that. You are going to remember and be more active uh, as opposed to if you say, I just want to write copy because I think it's cool right now. Um, so find a way to attach emotion. If you want to learn something, say, is this worth learning? And how do I attach? How do I move on a scale of one to 10, my emotional attachment from a six to an eight? What do I need to, if I sit down and play piano uninterrupted for 30 minutes, somebody's going to walk in and give me $10 million. You think I would sit down and play piano un, uninterrupted for 30 minutes? Yes, I would because of the emotion and the images attached with $10 million and what that would do. Okay, so find a way to attach emotion to the task. And if you cannot attach emotion to it, don't expect to learn it. It's probably not worth learning, right? Four, teach. This, you're, one, you're creating. Two, you're recontextualizing. Three, you're prioritizing when you teach. And most importantly, you get to learn it again. So always think like if I teach it, I get to learn it twice. And the holes you filled in your head, whoever you're teaching, even if it's yourself, even if you teach yourself, you might say, well, wait a minute. What about X, Y, Z? And you're going to start poking holes in your own lesson, which means you're going to have to learn it better, more in depth, yada, yada, yada. Right, so teach. And the fifth one is kind of a bonus, but it's going to accelerate your learning and it's going to allow you to do it over and over. And that's stress management. Sleep, meditate, exercise, anything that gets blood moving is good for your brain, right? If it's good for your body, it's good for your brain. So work those things and make sure you're protecting your sleep meditate from time to time you're not going to learn anything if your hormones are a wreck and you're underslept and we do a ton of videos on sleep so if you really want to delve into sleep just look around we'll get them out so though that's learning how to learn you have to learn how to be active you have to learn how to prioritize you have to learn how to tag something with emotion and visualize teach always always teach it can be yourself it can be your brother your sister your spouse but make sure you are taking the time to teach because it'll also ensure that you understand you get a second opportunity to learn and the fifth one is stress management and we talk about that a lot so do those things now literally pause this video it's almost over anyway i'm almost done talking um do these things immediately don't put it off for later become active listen to your next video at a high speed and before you go into it say okay i really want to learn how to learn for this reason attach emotion to it and then go teach it to somebody cool guys you just got hit with some really powerful and pragmatic stuff don't you think i do and if you agree, hit the thumbs up button below and like the video. Let me know in the comments what other videos you want to see, what you want me to expand upon, and what questions you have. And remember, all of this stuff is only as powerful as the actions you take in your execution, the practical applications you can derive from it. So let's see how quickly and effectively and efficiently you can master the things to come. You're going to get information here that's going to help you on your journey that you will not find anywhere else. So 